Blue Campers. I'm Maya. And I'm Shelby. And we're from Orleans, Paris. We're here to kick off day two of Retro Barbecue Boot Camp. Those ribs and pork loin Miss Crystal and Claire made were finger licking. If you were here with us yesterday, you know that we like to start off each day at camp with the 4-H Pledge and a camp song. So stand up and join us in the 4-H Pledge. I pledge my head to clear thinking, my heart to greater loyalty, my hands to larger service, and my health to better living. For my club, my community, my country, and my world. Do y'all know the bunny hop? Well, that's our favorite camp song. So come on, campers, and join us in doing the bunny hop. <laughs> We hope you enjoyed the bunny hop. Hope to see y'all Thursday night for family game night. Bye! Bye. Have, have, have fun. <laughs>just saying i love chickens you know we got some folks checking in from grand isle and morgan city there we go oh. 
and we have Hillary Bordelon saying low and slow. Yes! <laughs> air fried chicken. I mean, <laughs> I don't like it. That's a good, healthy option. I love that. That's okay. Well, Silly, keep typing in. If Robert sees the answer, maybe he can show it on screen or give you a shout out. But we were looking for the term artificial selection. Yes. Artificial selection means that a human being chose this animal and this animal to crossbreed, remember from yesterday, and they created the animal meat. Mm -hmm. Which means that big chicken that's happy and healthy and can feed lots of people. That's what we're going for. Mm -hmm. So, where are all these chickens found? Next slide. Where are they? They are all, there's 
They're not. They're not in Louisiana. However, we have a lot of chickens in Louisiana. They all do. Louisiana's number one livestock commodity is chickens. Oh, wow. Where are they found? Union Parish. North Louisiana. Give us a shout out. Let if us you're, know. If you're in Union, Natchitoches, Caldwell, any, Lincoln, anywhere. All of those northern parishes. We want to see a shout out. Russ Vegas. Let us know. Yes. So, unfortunately, while they're our biggest commodity, yeah. we kind of have a small, we're a small state. We rank pretty okay. low you on the You know what? Louisiana, while well, we lack in quantity, we make up for flavor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Always. And I got an amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so Georgia is actually one of the top producing states. Okay, not and far, I, not far. I could not give a shout out to my home state, ranking in a third, Arkansas. If we have any Arkansas peeps, give me a Razorback in that chat. I know, I'm in LSU country. I'm going to get attacked in the comments. Is it okay? <laughs> Feel free. It's okay. We got you on the championship. We embrace it. <laughs> we embrace it. <laughs> So, that's where our chickens are found. Okay, so, we've been talking about where they're found, but Ms. Crystal, yesterday we talked about a lot of different names for our pig. I want to learn those same things for our chickens. Okay, so, let's say I'm a scientist. What do I call chickens in a scientific name? So, what do we call scientific pigs? What was the scientific names for pigs? Tell us in the comments, or better yet, go play our cook oop from yesterday and show us how smart you are. Do it. Get in the rankings. Show how smart you are. So today, though, our scientific name is avian. Avian. Like aviation? That's actually a great way to think about it. Okay. So okay. wings. Yes. Chickens have wings. They have wings. And so avian. Avian. Aviation. Wings. Avian. It's a great way to remember it. Awesome. Well, yesterday, you know my favorite thing. We talked about our little baby piglet, which actually baby pigs are named. There we go. Okay, there yeah. we go. But what do we call our little baby chickens? Little chicklets? <laughs> chicklets. We call them chicks. Okay. 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 I like that. Little chicks. Little chicks. And just like pigs, it's super even faster because they're a smaller animal. So, did we get any of those scientific names for pigs? Oh, do we know? Pharaoh. Getting there. Pharaohing. Uh, what is Pharaohing again? Pharaohing was giving birth. Oh, okay. So that would have got us to our thing. Yeah, that would have got us to our thing. But we'll give you a little hint. Porcine. Oh, porcine was our answer for scientific name. But Pharaohing came up, and so Pharaohing was what we called gestation in pigs. Oh. And it was how many days? We had a hint. You can tell us our hint or our days. I know you know it. Tell us what gestation means. Tell us how many days it is. Mm -hmm. And in chickens, it's 21 days. That's less than a month. So it only takes 21 days for an egg to hatch. Whoa. Here's the even crazier thing. And this is something most people don't know. Uh -huh. So while it takes only 21 days to, for an egg to hatch, mm -hmm. we actually can have an egg laid from a hen, which is a female chicken, oh. every 24 to 26 hours. Oh, wait, that's like every day. Every day. Oh my goodness. A hen can lay an egg every day. And it they will lay an egg every day with or without a rooster, which is a male chicken. Okay. Okay. So if they want the eggs to hatch, we have to have a rooster. Okay, makes sense. But the egg is still going to be laid with, regardless of if the rooster is present. And that egg can be eaten, but it will oh. never turn into a chick. Oh, okay. So you're telling me that if I have chickens like in my backyard, I can get one egg every day. One egg every day. Wow. One egg per chicken. So if I have like three chickens, three eggs a day. Wow. And then if I have a rooster with my hens, then I can have little baby chicks. You can have baby chicks. Oh, Arkansas Troll Center manager is telling us something. Hey, Katie Richard. Uh, we also have Hillary once again, Jody Guillory, Shelby uh, Chalette. A few folks coming in saying that the uh, gestation period in the pigs would be 114 days. Yes. You're three, brilliant. Three months, three weeks, three days. That's yes. right. Yes. You're so proud. If y'all are not playing our cahoot, you're missing out. Miss you're going to be so ready for family game night. So many points and get all the prizes. You're going to kill it at family game night. You're, you're going to have a podium standing for sure. Yes. So now that we talked a little bit about that, and we are talking about chicken today. We're not focusing on eggs. But mm -hmm. it's a big part of what we consume and how we get protein. So oh, we yeah. want to talk about it. I love it. So our next slide, we're talking about types of chickens. Do you remember how I talked about that? Where we had 9.2 billion broiler chickens in the yes. U.S.? Broiler. Like a grill. Like a grill. 
grilled. That's a great, another great way to remember it. So broiler chickens are the chickens that we are raising for meat. Do you remember we had maternal breed pigs yesterday and terminal breed pigs? Mm -hmm. Maternal was our good mom, terminal was our good meat. Exactly. So our broiler chickens are good meat. Okay. They are terminal chickens. Okay. And then we have laying hens. Ah, oh, like they lay eggs. Exactly, just like a good mother. Okay, so broiler we eat, laying lay eggs. And we are only focusing on broiler today, but we got to mention one other thing about these eggs. Everybody knows there's what? There's two kinds of eggs, right? Two colors. You got your brown egg, you got your white egg. Wrong. No, what? There are green eggs. No. There are blue eggs. Dr. Seuss was right. Dr. Seuss was real. No way. Yeah, absolutely. So there are all kinds of colors of eggs. And nutritionally, eggs are exactly the same. Uh, the so only thing that can change the nutrition of an egg mm -hmm. is what the chicken ate. Makes sense. But the color does not determine it. So lots of people think that brown eggs are better for you than white eggs. But nutritionally, that's not the case. What actually determines the color of that egg is the color of the chicken earlobes. <laughs> Wait, their earlobes? Their earlobes. Stop. If you look at the picture, you can see in between the red, you'll see some <laughs> white, and you'll see some red. And that's their earlobes. And so if they have white earlobes, they have white eggs. Absolutely. If they have brown earlobes, then they have brown eggs. Yes, they do. And that is it. That is it. Wow. The only difference between colors of eggs. So crazy. Only time we're going to let you have an egg shout out. We want to see some ear emojis. We want to see some egg emojis. Yes. Let's see you get a little active in that chat. Yes. Show us your eggs. Up. Moving on to the next slide. We said breed doesn't matter, right? Correct. We have broiler chicks. Mm -hmm. Chickens <laughs> and chicks become chicken, absolutely. And if you remember from yesterday, we had eight fun breeds of things. Oh, so cute. And we so had all these fun things to talk about. Colors, ears, loved it. Chickens are boring. They are. Chicken are boring. Most of the genetics of all chickens are kind of controlled by two companies, Cobb and Ross. And what you can see on this picture, on the top line, it's all cock birds. On the bottom, it's all Ross birds. That means nothing. Basically, the only difference between these birds is how fast they grow, how big they grow, if they're slow growing, if they're going to be a very big chicken, or if they're going to be a small chicken. That's pretty much it. Okay, interesting. Yep. So, both of these companies are going to give us those happy and healthy chickens. Exactly. Wow, interesting. Well, that's good to know, though. We don't have to be concerned that they're going to be different. Not at all. Cool. So, real run, quick rundown on nutrition. We're just reviewing from yesterday. Chickens are just like pigs in that all livestock production, 60 to 70 percent of production costs comes from nutrition. So it's a very big part of the industry, and there are huge careers in this area. Mm -hmm. There are scientists that formulate diets to make sure our chickens have the best diets to keep them healthy and happy and growing. Mm -hmm. They are monogastrous, just like a pig, meaning oh. they have one stomach. Perfect. So one stomach, meaning they're just like us, so we have to feed them protein, we have to feed them carbohydrates. Mm. Just like pigs, we like soybean and corn for that. Perfect. But we can feed them a lot less to gain that one pound. Because the pig, we want it to get to like 280 pounds, but chickens, we don't want to have it. Not at all. We're really only looking for an eight pound chicken. Oh. So yesterday we talked about feed conversion mm. of the pigs, and we said it was a certain number to one. Can y'all tell us how many pounds of feed it took to gain one pound of gain in a pig, it's a lot lower in chickens. We're only trying to get to about an eight pound chicken, and it only takes about a pound and a half of feed per pound of gain in chickens. Oh, that's way better. And we can actually do it in the U.S. in about 42 to 50 days. That's less than two months. Absolutely. Super quick growth. Wow. We have amazing, amazing people in the animal science industry. They grow so fast. That is amazing. Absolutely. Huh. And so, that's it. Ms. Crystal has edited. That's all the animal science you get today. So we get it. We're moving on to the good parts. Let's talk about that chicken part. Meat science. Meat science. You yeah. saw this picture very similar mm -hmm. to what it looked like in pigs yesterday. Mm -hmm. But we got so many different types of cuts and and roasts. Pigs are big. We get a lot out of them. We get a lot out of them. 
Chickens are smaller. Chickens are so much smaller and very basic. Mm -hmm. You really, for the most get part, for, get four main parts, and then you have some other remnants that are great to use in this one. You get two pieces of each of those parts. So it ends up being eight. Exactly. And then you have just some little pieces that you can use in stocks and other things. You can definitely use the whole thing. Here's one of the things that we're going to show you today. So we're going to test your knowledge again, guys. We've been testing y'all morning, and we're going to keep doing it. Yeah. So if you have any questions that aren't, isn't really related to what we're talking about yet, just wait. Um, we'd be happy to answer those. Robert will let us know if there's great questions come up, and he'll interrupt us and let us know. The question that we're going to ask you right now, though, is yesterday we talked about something called locomotion and support muscles. And you want to just, do you remember what that meant? And if you do, looking at the picture you see now, Tell us which parts of the chicken you think is a locomotion and a support muscle. And while you do that, we're going to show you how to make the most out of your chicken. Mm -hmm. If you remember Miss Christina from yesterday, we talked about liking to be very financially fit. Oh, yeah. And one of the ways we can do that with our meat mm -hmm. is that we take away costs. Oh, yes. So the added cost. And one of the ways we do that in the industry is through a value-added product. And a value-added product just means we did something to it. If we cut it into a steak, if we cut it into a breast or a leg, if we seasoned it, if we cured it, the skin off. if we take the skin off, all of that adds cost to the meat. But we can do it at home. Mm -hmm. And in times like right now with COVID, mm -hmm. the reason we're having virtual camp, mm -hmm. we also saw a little bit of a meat shortage at times. Sometimes you couldn't find just breast or just something that you wanted in, in the meat counter. But a lot of times you could find a whole chicken. Yep. And while it seems intimidating, breaking out a chicken is super easy. Yeah. And we actually videoed it, for, videoed it for you this morning. And we want to show you how to break down a chicken. And so as you're telling us, remember, we're wanting to know what parts of the chicken are locomotion muscles, which part are support muscles, and check out how easy it is to break down a chicken in the next slide. Watch that video. get any of those but uh -oh. Come on, guys. but oh. I did see some folks did answer what the ratios were for gains in pigs and that's three to one. Yes. Three to one. Yeah. Well done. So it sounds like 
We might need to review locomotion muscles. Yeah, let's talk about that. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about locomotion yeah. Um, yeah. and support muscles. So, locomotion. Yesterday we made you walk around like a pig. Mm -hmm. Chickens don't walk on all fours. No, they walk on two legs. But they do flap their wings. Absolutely. They do. So, so what does locomotion what does locomotion mean? It means we're moving, right? We're moving. So if our legs and our wings mm -hmm. are moving, mm -hmm. when we move a lot, our muscles get tough. Just like when we we uh, work out our own muscles, mm -hmm. the muscles that we work a lot are tough muscles. And then other thing, like if you think about the pig yesterday, back and belly, they don't move as much. So on a chicken, think about the breast. The breast doesn't move a lot. It's what we call a support muscle. Yeah. Typically, support muscles are more tender. Mm -hmm. Locomotion muscles are more tough. Yeah. We'll talk a little bit more about that a little later. Yeah. But just keep in mind, our locomotion muscles in chicken are our dark meat leg, yes. thighs, and wings. Mm -hmm. And our support muscles are our breast tender legs. Yeah. You know what? On that subject, Mr. Crystal, I want to talk about a lot of times we have a question of light meat, dark meat, which one's better for it, all those things. Yeah. And so, and you talked about how when we cut apart a um, chicken, we can kind of control how we cook them, what we do. So, the protein level in any piece of our chicken, if it's a breast, if it's a wing, if it's a thigh, the if per ounce, the protein's the same. But the fat is a little bit higher in our dark meat chicken. Now, the thing that's interesting is that when you look at all animals, here's a fun trick, and it, it really applies to kind of our main three, like the ones that we're talking about, the, the pig, the chicken, and the cow. Guess you'll have to come back tomorrow. Oh, you will. But the less legs, the less fat. So a pig has how many legs? Four. Four. A chicken has how many legs? Two. So, less legs, less fat. So if you're just looking at all of your protein sources, the chicken is a good source. The best source, a fish has how many legs? None. None. No legs. So, it has the least amount of fat. So if you really want something very low in fat, go with the fish. But a chicken is still a good source. If you, if you want to have less fat within that chicken, go for the breast or the tenderloin. Now, another tip that I'm going to tell you, we're going to talk about it a little bit later, you cook with the skin on, then you can keep your chicken from drying out, keep it moist. Then you can take the skin off, throw it away, and it's not going to leave you with more calories. If you eat that skin now, and I understand it tastes good, so sometimes eat it. Have it sometimes for a treat. But that's going to have a lot of calories in it. So just a little fun fact, nutrition-wise, for you. So what I'm hearing is that we're talking about fat a lot, and mm -hmm. talking about chicken being maybe a better option. Does that mean I don't eat beef and pork? Oh, no way, no way. And we talked about this yesterday. Absolutely. That you can have things that you don't eat every day, every day, every day, and you just want to be careful that you just know pork or beef have a little bit more fat. And so you can eat that sometimes, and maybe it's just that you eat a little bit less so that you're being careful of how much you're eating. We don't want to eat like three pounds of steak every single day, but if you have just a serving of it, that's okay. And three ounces is a typical protein yes. source serving, about the size of your hand. Awesome. So if I eat some pork one day, some chicken one day, come back tomorrow to find out how to eat beef one day, and then maybe throw in some of that fish that we're not really talking about, but have a variety of a diet, I'm going to be good to go. Absolutely. Nothing's off the table when you eat some variety. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Love it. We getting any talk in the chat? Uh, I don't know, but Lindsay, I know I'm with you. I love the chicken skin, especially when it's crispy, too. I, I do, too. <laughs> I do, too. And I told you, eat it sometimes. And, hey, if you make fried chicken a sometimes food where you're you're having a variety, eat that chicken skin. Maybe on that Sunday afternoon Absolutely. lunch. Absolutely. Eat the chicken skin. I like it crispy, too. But hold the phone. Yes. Talk about animal science. Yes. Talk about meat science. Ooh. We are all here for one thing. We cook it. We cook it. Time to move the slide. We are going to get lit. Getting lit. So we know we're talking about barbecue on barbecue boot camp. Mm -hmm. The best, and we learned this yesterday, the best way to start barbecue is with a strong fire foundation. What did we say barbecue is defined as? Tell us in the chat. It's super important. What does barbecue actually mean? 
And we're going to want, when we're barbecuing, remember, we want the heat that Ms. Crystal's talking about to be at about 220 degrees. Because, Mr. Robert, have we given him enough time to give us an answer what barbecue is? We can keep talking. We can keep talking. Uh, low okay. and slow. Low, low and slow. slow. Lynette Folsom. That's what we're wanting. Because we want the temperature low and it's going to take some more time. Now, to get that temperature, we're going to need to make a fire. And that's going to come from charcoal and wood. So, our charcoal is going to be our main fuel source to get that fire going. It's going to either be a lump or a briquette. And then the wood is going to be what we get our flavor in. So we have all those different types of wood, the fruit wood for the mild, or if you want a really strong flavor, you have mesquite and all the things in between. Okay. So when we're building a fire, oh wait, hold on. Got a question. Got a question. Got a question. Lynette wants to know, is air fried chicken healthier than deep fried chicken? Okay, Absolutely. healthy living. Healthy living specialist. Yeah. To go. That's a great question. Yes. Air fried chicken is healthier than deep fried chicken. So an air fryer what that means is it's a it's a um it's a it's something that we use that we are going to put our chicken into and you don't use oils you may use just a little bit to spray it on but you're not going to be submerging it into the oil and so it's going to just heat up your chicken and cook it and get it crispy similar to like if you fry a chicken but you're not using a bunch of bunch of bunch of oil so it has way 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 less fat it is absolutely a really healthy alternative that could be something that you eat more often they love that fried chicken i use my air fryer all the time oh yeah i love an air fryer great question madeline any other questions hey we're moving to the next slide we're going to build that fire to smoke but hold the phone we're not doing it we know we're at barbecue boot camp today but we're not doing it nope we're not barbecuing today nope we said barbecue was slow and slow we're switching it around today. Why are we switching it around? So here at 4-H, we have an amazing contest. It's so fun. It's known as the Barbecue Chicken Contest. And this barbecue boot camp is going to prepare you to get to that competition, participate, and win. You can win money, or if you're old enough, you'll win a chance to go and compete nationally. Where is it? Ooh. It's in Louisville, Kentucky Ooh. at the National Poultry and Egg Conference. That's so cool. It's amazing. Do it. Growing up, this contest, this barbecue chicken contest, was my favorite contest in Johnson County, Arkansas. <laughs> I participated every year. Me and my sister would compete every year. And it was so much fun. And there's not just the barbecue chicken contest. There's also the barbecue turkey contest. And we also have an egg demonstration contest that you can participate in. And so if you're a member of 4-H, which there's, it's super simple to become a member. You just oh, talk yeah. to your local agent. If you're in Louisiana, it's your parish agent. If you're in other states, every state or area will have a 4-H agent. And you just get in touch with them and you can become a 4-H member and compete in these contests. Here in Louisiana, we do our contest in February. During the state livestock show. So if you're showing livestock, you can also barbecue some chicken. And if you want to barbecue some chicken, you can just check out the livestock show here in that group. Yeah, they have the greatest animals. It's so much fun. So today, we're grilling. We are grilling. So yeah. next slide, Mr. Robert, let's get grilling. And by the way, the National 4-H Poultry and Egg Conference just uh, commented, yeah. said it's a great contest and to come and see us. Absolutely. Yeah. Shout out. Thanks, National Poultry. So go like their Facebook page, and you can keep up with what fun things we're doing at the national level. But every state is going to compete in this contest, and we love to see this contest grow. Absolutely. That is one of the most fun conferences as well when you get old enough. So let's talk about how they could dominate at that contest. Let's do it. Let's get grilling. So what's the difference between grilling and barbecue? Do you already know? If you already know the difference between barbecue and grilling, tell us in the comments. Tell us. Barbecuing, remember, slow and slow. Grilling is directly over a flame, and it's high, high heat. So yesterday when we were barbecuing our pork, it was not over any flame. It was not over any coals or any fuel source of any sort. It was indirectly on a smoker or a grill area, mm -hmm. not over a flame. Our heat was over here, our meat was over here, not together. Today it's different. Yes, with grilling, 
Our heat is here, our meat is here. They are right directly, the meat is directly on top. When you watch in movies, you watch people grilling, and you hear that sizzle, that's because they are grilling directly over the heat, and it's a high heat. We love that sizzle. And we were talking a lot about the barbecue grill needing to be around 220 degrees, but we're not really keeping up with the temperature directly of our grill. You just gotta gotta feel around and find your hot spots, find your cool stuff spots, move your meat around. So how do you know when your meat is done? We check the temperature, very important. Meat thermometer, mm -hmm. and what are we looking for? For chicken, all chicken products, all of it, 165 degrees, 165 degrees. That's the exact same temperature that our ground pork products needed yesterday. Mm -hmm. So all chicken has to get to 165 degrees to be safe. And we do that because the bacteria, like the E. coli, or salmonella that may be found on chicken we wanted to die. It grows a lot better on chicken at times, and you find a lot of it, and it's just, it's no fun to deal with, and it will die at 165 degrees, so that's what we put to. Mm -hmm. But we got about, we still have to build that foundational fire. So, foundational fire, let's talk about it. Okay, so when we go to the next slide, we're going to show you a little video of how we started our chimney. Let's check that out. Okay, and I did get some answers on what grilling was. Amy says hot and quick. The grilling is hot and quick, and barbecue is low and slow. Yes. Je Jessica says grilling sometimes uses propane. Yeah, that's Absolutely. a great way. Grilling with propane is a great accessible way. That you, if you want to do weekday and you don't want to mess with charcoal, propane makes it easy. Mm -hmm. I love to use my propane grill because it's really fast. Absolutely. So if we're going to use a charcoal grill, though, let's look at how we can really start that charcoal fire. We talked about the charcoal chimney yesterday. We have a video to show you today of how we actually started that. So right. let's get, can you get that plan in? Awesome. Okay, so you saw that when we have a charcoal chimney, it the thing that it does is that it raises our charcoal off of the ground so that we can get one of our key elements. And if you look at our, our fire triangle, there are three things that we need. Tell us in the comments what those three things that we need are. Be creative. Use some emojis. Ooh, love those. So we're going to get our charcoal off the ground in our chimney. And then we put a fuel source underneath, like we put a little bit of cardboard, some paper, and then you're going to use your heat source, your fire, light up that that uh, paper, and then it's going to light those charcoal on fire, get them really nice and hot. And then what's really cool is once they get really ashy, you can just pour those directly onto your grill. If you don't have a chimney, don't worry about it. No big deal. Chimneys are not necessary. No. You can build your charcoal pile just like you see in the picture there, directly on the grill, under the grate. Mm -hmm. Some will have a second grate that you can put your charcoal on, some it'll go directly on the grill, it just depends on your grill. But you can build a tower, light from underneath, you may still have to put some kennel in, you may have to use instant light charcoal, whatever your preference is, but you don't have to have a chimney. Mm -hmm. But we learned from yesterday to today, we like a chimney for our barbecuing, so we used it for our grilling as well. And you know what? Ms. Crystal said that we learned things. You have to play with it. You have to figure out what works for you. It, it can be challenging, but once you get it, you're going to feel like a champion. Yes, we do have a question. We actually have three. Uh, first, Amy says, does turkey count as a chicken product? Great question. Good question. So, turkey is a different species than chicken. So it does not count as a chicken product. But what we call that whole family is poultry. So if you hear the word poultry, we're talking about a domesticated fowl. Sometimes you see it in the grocery store. Yes, like the poultry section, and you'll find chicken there, you'll find turkey there. In some grocery stores, you might even see duck. That's Ooh. really more of a game animal, but we do have duck farms that we will have. So it's a poultry product as well. But chicken and turkey together are poultry, but they are separate. Next question, do you poke the largest part of the chicken to check temps, or what's the best best practice for that? Who is that? You're That's Lindsay Baker. You're Lindsay. Yes. 
Lindsay is all about learning. She loves learning. And Love so it. we are going to get to it, Miss Lindsay. But you're going to have to hold your horses. We're not really like school fun. <laughs> so, but you've given a great hint. And you might just be right. So, and the questions are rolling in now. Whoa. So, Jody Guillory says, what is the difference between a griller and a barbecue pit? This is a great question. We talked a little bit about this yesterday. I'm going to let Miss Claire take that. But Jody, it's an amazing question. So, our griller, our barbecue pit is going to be where we have our low and slow. And then, what's our griller, Miss Principal? So, a grill is typically... Um, Something that you can put cold or fuel source mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to have something that is labeled a grill mm -hmm. or a smoker. Smokers, you probably aren't going to grill a ton on. You'll mm -hmm. probably use it for a smoker. But if you only have a grill, you can still smoke on a grill because we said it was indirect heat versus direct heat. Mm -hmm. And so, as we were talking about earlier, if you build your charcoal or you pour your charcoal the hot charcoal on one side one half of your grill and then place your meat that you're wanting to smoke on the other side that's indirect and They're not on top of each other and you're still smoking it may take less charcoal so that you can maintain your temperature and that's okay but you can absolutely smoke in a grill and you can grill in certain smokers yeah because with your grill it's that direct heat so it's going to be it's going to give you the opportunity to have your fire, whether it's propane or it's charcoal, so that you can directly put your meat on top of that plate. Remember, barbecue and, and grilling is not about the equipment you're using. It's about barbecue being low and slow, grilling behind fast. It's the way you do it. It's a method. Yes. What else? Okay. Uh, Hannah Puckett says, what part of the chicken do you barbecue? You, Hannah, you're Love leaving it. in. Love you have led us in. Really, you can barbecue any part, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Now, we've talked about those locomotive muscle, muscles, tough mm -hmm. muscles, and things like that. And so as we get cooking, yeah, when we talk about barbecue, barbecue and chicken, it's kind of hit or miss. Yeah. So a chicken's pretty small, right? It's mm -hmm. not going to take a long time no. to cook. Yeah. And in general, it's small. And chicken is not naturally tough. Even though those locomotion muscles like being very, very good for barbecue in pork, they're great for barbecue and chicken as well, yeah. but they're not naturally tough really because they just aren't. And I don't know that I want to worry about the indirect heat, getting all of that figured out, getting my fire, keeping it maintained, yeah. doing all the things just for a single chicken. I would probably save that for Thanksgiving or a holiday with a whole turkey, big turkey. Or maybe you're having a big get together and doing a lot of whole chickens because you're definitely going to want to keep that chicken probably whole yeah. if you're going to do a smoky barbecue on it. But we are doing grilling today, and as normal, two methods non traditional barbecue and our traditional grilling, which is going to mimic what you would have to do at that barbecue chicken contest. So as long as you're watching Barbecue Bootcamp today, you will have a recipe and the skills to compete and do great at this contest. And so we're making you a champion. Yes. So if we move to our next slide. Let's get cooking. Yes. Sorry. Let's get cooking. We're going to get cooking. <laughs> and we're going to make honey mustard grilled chicken. And with our leg quarters, we're going to talk about that. And then we're going to do a slow cooker barbecue chicken. So our honey mustard grilled chicken is our traditional grilling method. Our, our slow cooker barbecue chicken is the way that we're going to get those barbecue flavors, but it's not necessarily with a grill or a smoker or things like that. You don't have to have any of the um, materials that you have for grilling. Absolutely. So first off, we're going to talk about our honey mustard grilled chicken. So pretty simple, not a ton of ingredients. We have four chicken leg quarters, soy sauce, melted butter, and honey mustard barbecue sauce. Let's talk about what those leg quarters are. Mr. First of all, what are leg quarters? So leg quarters are the entire leg portion of a chicken. And so it's the thigh and the drumstick mm -hmm. connected. And like we saw in that video where we broke down the chicken, we saw you, we showed you how to cut off for that leg quarter. 
Absolutely. So we left that all together, and that is the actual portion that you would be grilling in the barbecue chicken contest. Mm -hmm. You would be given like quarters, and you would move forward for there. And this is actually very similar to the exact same recipe that I always used growing up. My dad taught me the soy sauce and butter basting, and my preference for barbecue sauce was always a honey mustard barbecue sauce on delicious grilled chicken. I don't know why, but it was always my preference. My sister always made her barbecue sauce, like we did yesterday with Pete's barbecue sauce. Yeah. But I always liked the honey mustard. I always just bought it so a lot, and so that's what we did. Love it. And you know, this person will use the word basting. So if you know what basting is in the comments, or if you've ever basted it before, tell us in the comments. I want to hear. But for us, what that meant was that we took soy sauce, and we took melted butter, mixed those together, and then we brushed them on the chicken every now and then when we were grilling. And we actually have a couple of videos to show you. So let's go to that next slide, Mr. Robert, and let's show them those three videos of how we cook our chicken. You hear that sizzle? We love that sizzle. That means we're grilling. We put salt and pepper on our chicken quarters. Not too much salt, because we are basting with soy. Yeah. Just a little. There's our basting. Yeah. Why are we basting? Well, because we want to keep our chicken from getting dry. This is going to give some liquid, some moisture, so that our chicken doesn't get too dry. And you see, we have our skin on our chicken as well. So we basted, we got it up to temp, we put some barbecue sauce on it, but how do we know for sure that it's done? It's our video. Here it comes. Now the suspense. Will kill you. As you're watching, what, what temperature? temperature? What are we looking for? What should it be? It's going to get there. Can Tell you beat us. it? Can you beat the thermometer? Getting there? This is it. Getting there? Sometimes it gets right up there and then you have to get it. Sometimes you have to be patient. But it's important to be patient. It has to get to that 165. It does. 165, that's it. Did y'all get it? In. Did y'all get it? I bet they did. I know they did. They're brilliant. So smart. They're a chicken genius. They're going to kill the cousin later today. Oh, they are. Our chicken. And then they're going to help that off with it. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, they sure are. And so you have to, oh, we've got a question. Yes. Katie Richard did give that temperature as well as Lindsay Baker at 165. And also, Tina Alderson had an interesting question. Okay. Can you eat the chicken's comb? Oh, ooh, I don't know that one. Do you know that one? That I know of. In the U.S., for sure, we don't consume it. Can you is the interesting part to that question. Um, I'm going to say you're probably not going to want to. Because pretty much what that comb is going to consist of, where's the comb? So the comb is that thing that stands up. It's also, so the red thing that stands up on the head, sometimes you'll see wattles, which are a little bit different, but they're the same material. That's going to be straight cartilage. It's going to oh. be straight cartilage. Very tough. Yeah, it, it's not going to be delicious. You know, they eat a lot of parts of chicken that we don't consume in the U.S. and other parts of the world, and I would have to do some research, truthfully, to find out if that's something we consume in other parts of the world. You know, in the U.S., we don't eat a lot of chicken feet, for the most part. But over in the eastern part of the world, chicken feet is very, very popular. So we pickle chicken feet sometimes. We absolutely do. There, there are huge populations that love different forms of chicken feet. And Cajuns. Cajuns. Yeah. And all over, we do eat them. But it's not the most popular. It is not. It is not. No. Um, and so I'm going to say no. Probably not. But it may be thrown into stocks and stews for the car for the Oh, yeah. Content. Oh, yeah. That's a great question. That's a wonderful question. So let's look at our chicken. We have it here. We have it just so that we can show you. This is the actual. I'm going to come up with this layer. So this is the actual chicken that we grilled this morning. And if you were to turn in in the contest, I'm giving you a rundown. You're going to be so ready to win this contest. You notice there are two very different colors here. These both tip to 160. So color is not how you tell meat is done. Sure. You have to temp it. You have These to. Both of these leg quarters went to 165. We don't notice this one is so dark, and it's because the fire got really, really hot in that spot, and I wasn't paying attention, and I didn't get to it fast enough. And so you'll see that it's real dark, and it got super, super hot. This one, so much prettier. Look how gold and brown that one is. Mm, also, it. there's something else. 
very telltale on the appearance of this. Notice how I ripped the skin here. The skin goes all the way down to the, the bone and I ripped it. I also made a little hole. Ooh. Appearance is a matter of judging. And so when you are competing for the contest, you want to make sure you use equipment that doesn't tear the skin, that you're very easy with it, you control your fire, you move your chicken around the grill to cold spots when you need to or hot spots when you need to. The most important part, because you will be disqualified, if you don't temp at 165. Mm -hmm. A judge will not taste a raw chicken. Oh, no. And so taste is the most important factor. Appearance comes mm -hmm. later. But if it doesn't temp, you're out. A judge won't taste it, and you shouldn't either. Never. So you're ready to cook some quarters. Woohoo! These are delicious. Yes. And I, we expect to see you at the barbecue chicken contest in February. Oh, we would love to. You have so much time to practice. Yes. It is the 4th of July this weekend. Oh, maybe you should practice then. You should probably start. And you know what? Speaking of the 4th of July, what if it rains? There is rain in the forecast, people. There is. But I have a solution. That non-traditional method? Our slow cooker barbecue chicken. So we got that slide. If we are looking at that recipe on that slide, so here, this is so simple. This is one of the easiest recipes I think I've ever made, honestly. Yes. If you're looking for something during the week that's easy or it's rainy, do this one. You take four chicken breasts. You take half a bottle of barbecue sauce, whatever's your favorite, or you can make your own. You take half a bottle of zesty Italian dressing. You put, you take, your slow cooker, you put four chicken breasts on the bottom, and then you squirt your barbecue sauce on, you put your Italian dressing on, and then you plug in your slow cooker, turn it to low, and let it sit there for six hours. That is literally it. Drop it. After, yep, put it in, walk away. Love it. So when you come back after six hours, your chicken is fully cooked, it's going to be cooked to about 165 degrees, then you can take two forks, and pull your chicken apart to shred it. So as you can see in the pictures, that's our shredded chicken. You can eat this in a bunch of ways. You can put it on a bun. You can eat it just as it is. You can do a lot of things with it. But it's that real Louisiana. So uh, we're going to eat sweet potatoes. Uh, yeah, we're going to eat sweet potatoes. We're going to eat Louisiana sweet potatoes. Best way. So here's what we did. We took our Louisiana sweet potato. We got it baked up. We put a little coleslaw. And then we drizzled some barbecue sauce on our chicken. Mr. Robert, can we see this? That looks awesome, yes. It is delicious. I wish you could smell it. It's so good. It's so good. So good. So this is going to be a really good, you know, this is a really nice and healthier op option. If we don't want to have our, you know, fried chicken, this is our something we can eat more often. And this is delicious. So good. Absolutely amazing. Yes. So... We've got our grill. We know how to build a fire. Yep, we got it. We know the difference between grilling and barbecue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We also have a non-traditional method for those rainy days. Yes. We are going to enter the barbecue chicken contest. We in are, January. and we're going to dominate. Yeah, we are. Be a champion. It's been a great day at barbecue. It's been so fun. Do we have any more lingering questions, Mr. Robert? Anything else? have some great comments. Uh, Lindsay did uh, point out something great. It's kind of like pulled pork, but pulled it chicken. Is. It's like actually like pulled very, pork. Very, very similar. We have Amy says, my grandma is coming down to Louisiana for the first time in five years, and the only thing that she wants from us in our family uh, is our family rib recipe, and that it's so good. That's awesome. Love that. Oh, so exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Yesterday. Yeah. Love that. So, so good. Okay. So, we're so we're wrapping up camp, mm -hmm. and as normal, just like we did yesterday, we're doing Vespers. Yep. Vespers are just our moment to reflect and say how the day went. This is also virtual camp. Yeah. And as bummed as we are, virtual camp just doesn't have the connection like real camp. Mm -hmm. I want to get to know y'all. Yeah. I know that some of y'all are not from Louisiana. Some of y'all are. We got to meet Abby and Sean yeah. yesterday, and we did it all through Flipgrid. Yes. And, well, we know it's an extra step. Downloading the app or going to the website, right there on the screen, you can do your QR code, mm -hmm. or you can use the link. Mm -hmm. We're going to do our Vespers right now, because what it allows us to do is record a short video telling us your name and where you're from. Tell us your favorite chicken item. 
and what you're most looking forward to barbecuing first. We want to get to know you. If there's something else you want to tell us, tell us. And then go and comment on another one. Yeah. Meeting Abby yesterday was so great. It was so fun. It was so fun. Your camp counselors are going to be doing Flipgrid as well. Yeah. You know, we know we have a lot of kiddos watching with their parents. Mm -hmm. And if it takes your parents logging in with a Gmail or a Microsoft account, that's okay. That's awesome. We'll see your selfie, and that will be how we talk to you. Yeah. So, Claire and I, we're doing our best for driving mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. So, we want, we want you to do yours as well. So, grab your phone, go to the link, whatever it is, and we're doing our best for now. Let's grab it. I'm going to walk over here. Me so too. I'm too close. Hey, guys. Barbecue boot camp today was amazing. We had so much fun, but y'all already know my favorite grilling those leg quarters. Hey y'all, so how's it going? So excited. My favorite chicken is the chicken. The love how we can do with it. Can't wait to meet y'all. So excited. Bye. Gotta take our selfie. Love it. Post it. Awesome. Vespers done. Go play that Kahoot. Go say hi to us. We would love to chat with you. So we have our Kahoot challenge up to test your knowledge and get you ready for family game night on Thursday. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Live Kahoot on YouTube. So excited. So we'll play Kahoot live. Download the app. You don't have to have the app. You can always play on your computer. Yeah. This is a chance to test your knowledge barbecue boot camp and win a prize. We're going to give prizes to the top three contestants across the nation that join us for Barbecue Boot Camp. Yeah. We're so excited to have you join us. We're excited that you're with us today. Thanks, y'all. We stayed on time. Love we it. are so excited to have you tomorrow. Tomorrow is Beef Day. Beef! We are so excited. It's sponsored by the Louisiana Beef Industry Council, and we are going to be cooking brisket mm. we're also going to teach y'all how to choose the best steak yeah. and make the most out of that meat counter and so come back tomorrow we're going to have so much fun and we can't wait to see you at barbecue boot camp we're so excited Thanks have a great day bye y'all